Amen. There's power in the blood. That's it. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power.
to be in a position to help Martin when he needed him most and help the family when they needed him So we're, we're thankful, very thankful for that. So remember that family that in your prayers. We'll let everyone know once we get the information regarding his funeral arrangements. But uh, I promise them we'll be praying. Don't forget Miss Darlene's uh, family in that need. Uh, Kelly Dillon has his, we have his funeral this uh, Saturday and his family's in need, so pray for them as well. Someone else with a spoken request you'd like to share with the church this evening? Yes, Ms. Jane. I talked to Madge today and she's very sad and she wanted us to pray for her. I will, I'm sure will. Thank you, Ms. Jane. Somebody else? Yes, Ms. Jessica. For a lot of my family of Tennessee, my mammal is going to be coming up this month, but she has to Somebody else? Good. If not, continue to pray for our church. Please pray that God will help us. Uh, this latest round of COVID and along with the weather has got people uh, not as uh, apt to come out. I understand that. But let's pray that as things and conditions improve. And I always, once we get through January, the rest of the winter doesn't bother me. February is a short month. In March, you could have 60 degrees. So I'm looking at winter being almost gone now. I hope I don't jinx us. Uh, but let's, let's pray that God will help us. I, I, I've been thinking about, I don't know whether it would be best to do it on a Sunday night uh, during our uh, birthday and anniversary fellowship or pick a Saturday night. Uh, I'd like to have something like a, a push the boundaries of spring and have a hot dog and hamburger roast out in the hall. And just something to maybe excite people and get them thinking about warm weather and coming back to church. Inside, right? Inside, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outside. Well, you want to go outside for kids. Well, thank you. Let's go inside. Maybe a sunlamp. Maybe a sunlamp. Maybe a sunlamp. Okay. We'll be thinking about that. Um, uh, but anyone else with a prayer request you'd like to share before we pray? Remember Not to all those. Remember Jenny. Yes, it was Jenny, absolutely. Thank you, Ms. Jenny. All and Don and Myrtle. Don and Myrtle, and um, <clears throat> somebody said today that Mike Fresno had surgery on his knee towards the end of the week. I didn't know that, so let's remember that. He did? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All those with an unspoken request, you can share it or raise your hand. And I wonder if, uh, Brother Ron, would you ask God's blessings on our prayer request to raise your service, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you again once again, asking for your blessing upon all the prayer requests that been spoken, especially the unspoken ones. We know all of our hearts and all of our needs, and we trust that you take care of everything for us. We ask these favors in your name. Amen. 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 Well, do you want to sing for us tonight? Pain. 
He's just waiting on your heart to say, Lead me right on that long black train. But you know that victory in the Lord I say, Victory. Who make the 
song for the robins to sing and moon on the moon in the starry skies somebody bigger than you and I He likes the way when the road is long He keeps you company Love to guide you, he walks beside you, just like he walks with me. When I am weary, filled with despair, who gives me courage to go on from there, and who gives me faith that will never die? Somebody. Stars in heaven. 
who? Us? No, he gave gifts to benefit other people, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Anything somebody does with the gift of God, God doesn't want them to exalt in themselves, but he exalts God, and it's for the benefit of other people. Um, Paul said in the verse first here, it says, And though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I have become as sounding brass, or as a tinkling cymbal. Now, I happen to think my red is not just a set of drums over here. They can be cymbals. What are they made out of? Brass, right? If you take a drumstick or anything and go over there and hit one of those things, what happens? It starts to ring. But what happens? After a few seconds, it just teeters out on it. Can you hear a thing? That's what he's saying about all these other gifts. They're good for a while, but after a while, they're not benefiting anybody. Some of them maybe. But he said, love goes on and on. That's what he's trying to say. Uh, well, love never fails. Correct. Exactly. Love is something everybody can have, right? Everybody might not be, have a gift of healing or speaking in tongues or prophecy or whatever that is, but everybody can have love in their heart. And what? And it should. Correct? Hey, when I, uh, when I was before the Presbyterian Board to be licensed and then later on to be ordained, uh, I mean, I was pretty intimidated by that, and they asked a lot of questions, and you feel very humble and unworthy, and kind of questioning my calling until I thought back about how the guy had brought me, and he answered me in very specific terms about me being called to preach, and, and it just comes to me, if I can't do anything else, I can love. Okay. If, I can't, I can, if I can't do nothing else, I can just love. And I think you do a good job of it, Brother Joe. <laughs> Which all agree? Yes. 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 <laughs> Not only can everybody have love, but it can have an effect on everybody. Don't it? That's what love does. Love has an effect on people. A lasting effect. Love is something that can affect people that might not be in a position to see other gifts. Exactly. It's not hard to show love, is it? What do you got to do? Be kind? I think a little later on in the lesson, we'll see where it says love is kind. <laughs> and you talk about positive thinking. You hear these, these, these all uh, uh, seminars on positive thinking. How more positive can you get than to love somebody and love people? The ultimate love was Jesus' sacrifice of himself, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He said, I can call, I want to call ten legions of angels. I don't know how many, that'd be a whole lot, wouldn't it? You can I destroy all the people, take care of you. And from what we read a couple of weeks ago, I believe the angels are sitting up there ready to go. <laughs> you read on in chapter, verse 4. Charity suffers long and is kind. Like I say, kindness shows love, don't it? Uh, some, if somebody can't be mean to you and, and, and you think that they love you, some, uh, love is something that shows, kind of beams out of a person most of the time. You can see love in people. It said, it envieth not. Now, a lot of these Corinthians, it seems as though they was jealous of the gifts that other people had. Tongues seemed to be one of them in prophecy, maybe. But he said, you know, you ever see anybody that's jealous of somebody because they love somebody? He said, I'm, I'm jealous of Silas. He loves too much. A <laughs> <laughs> brother Joe or anybody. I don't, I don't like that energy. Just, I'm just envious of them. You know what? If they are, we ought to copy them and make them our example. Right. If, that's, that's, if that's the case. He said, suffer us long. Uh, 
I kind of take out of this, uh, watch your temper. <laughs> sometimes we can, we can be loving, but sometimes we our, can let our temper get away with us too, can we? And I, I'm pretty bad about that. I need some help in that area sometimes. Uh, watch what I say and do. Somebody say something? I'll beat it out of the room. Hey, that temper getting away from me, that's just tough. Uh. <laughs> there you go. I'm glad we got this on tape, it might be more so than later on. <laughs> He said, uh, it envious not, charity or love falleth not itself, and is not puffed up. Amen. If God's give you an ability to do something, what you saying? Don't brag about it. Right. Don't say, look at me. Look what I can do. You know, as I read this, I thought about what Jesus said about giving. Now, I'm going to read that to you. If you'll look at it, not, I'll read it to you. Sixth chapter of Matthew. Talking about giving. He said, Take heed that your alms, do not your alms before men to be seen of them, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, or when you give your offering or money, whatever, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. What's he saying? That's going to be your reward. You get to brag about yourself. That's the same way it is with a, uh, with a gift that God gave. If you brag about it, that's your reward. There won't be no reward up there, but you get it here. That's your reward. Um, <clears throat> I've seen a preacher one time, and I know why most of he is, going anyway. But he was preaching about giving. <laughs> and and he said, I just happened to find my tithing receipt right here. He said, I got bought a Cadillac with that. I guess that was his reward, huh? Get you to brag about it. I saw a documentary one time gave about churches. I think this was maybe just when the prosperity gospel was really taking root. And they actually had a hidden camera in the church and they sang a lot of songs while they're taking the offering. They kept singing until People who counted off and came back out and they listed how much everybody gave in the service and people clapped. That's wrong. So it's, in, it's not something that you brag about or be puffed up about. Do not, charity does not behave itself unseemly. Sink is not her own. And is not easily provoked and thinks no evil. That, uh, that pretty well sums it up. He said, Rejoice not in iniquity, but in rejoicing in the truth. Some people, if we have a, a tendency to say when somebody screws up, I told you so. <laughs> you know, that's not showing love, is it? Sure. You know, that's, that's you know, I told you. We have a tendency to do that sometimes. But what should we do? If we show love, we're going to show compassion. I think the Bible says, uh, pray for them lest you fall into the same thing yourself. Amen. You know, you don't know what you're going to get in that same situation. Are you going to be tempted? Are you going to fall into that same temptation? But show them love. And uh, so many times that's not the case uh, when we've seen that happen in churches. And, and the first thing people want to do is, is kick them out of the church. So what the Bible says is so we should show them compassion and love. If they don't straighten up, then you can discipline them. He said, uh, he bears all things. What's that mean? It means you put up with a lot, don't you? You can put up with a lot. That's what uh, uh, I forget exactly what Paul was talking about with people taking each other to court, you know, as Christians going to court with each other. He said, have your brother put up with a little bit from your brother or sister and take them to an outside court. He said, you can settle this among yourselves. 
So when we, if there's something between Christians that they can settle, and they bring the world in to settle it for them, you never tell them what kind of mess you're going to get into. Uh, David, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, that's fine. At the hospital today, Evelyn was talking, and one of the, I think the daughter said, in another month they've been married 73 years. Mm -hmm. I believe wow. 73 years they've been married. And, uh, and I said, boy, you don't hear that very much these days. Of course, they're, uh, the, all, the, all the children were one son were there, and a lot of the grandkids were there. And they're saying, yeah, no, you don't see that. My mom to do that. Because Mark and the other were just like everybody else. It wasn't always, you know, wine and roses for them. Maybe you know, if you're married for a few years, let alone 73, you have some disagreements, right? But she was ill before bear, and he was ill before bear. Right. You know? And that gets you there. Exactly. I got a, a habit of, uh, I'm sitting around watching television, I'll see somebody on the, one of these uh, actors or actresses, I'll just look them up on the, uh, you know, safari there and read about them. There's hardly any that's had been married four or five times. None of them are. That's just, just a shame, you know. Brother Day? Yes. I was in ninth grade class one time, and I heard these two guys talking. And they were talking about, this was, this was their exact words, the qualities they were looking for in their first wife. Oh. And I said, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even met her yet, you already. <laughs> 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 yeah. We didn't hear what you said. Turn around and tell us. <laughs> These two guys were talking about the qualities they were looking for in their first wife. You haven't met the girl yet, you already you already forced her. Yeah. Well, you have to number five, I know what they're looking for. Faith versus chatter. Charity never fails. You can't go wrong with love, yeah, can you? That's so true. You can't go wrong with that. Amen. He said, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. All these, these here things, he just gave a little example of all the gifts there. He said, someday, these things ain't going to matter. They're not going to matter. But the effects of love will go on and on. Somebody loved you to tell you about Jesus, right? Amen. Amen. And, and that effect of that's going to go on the rest of your life. You've probably told somebody that's saved about Jesus that it's going to go on and on. And, you know, love's not going to end when we get to heaven either. All these prophecies and all these tongues speaking or whatever, uh, it's not going to make any difference when we get to heaven. But, but love will. Love's what got us there. So, he said in verse 9, For, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Brother Joe, what do you think that means when it says that which is perfect is come? In Christ? In Christ. I think so. When Christ comes, because he's the only thing that's perfect, right? Ain't <laughs> nobody else perfect. Nothing, nothing on this earth perfect. Matter of fact, it gets worse. So. He said, when, when that perf which perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. This means that we're going to understand things different, in a different light than what we, we see it now. And, uh, it could mean here that, you know, when he was uh, first saved, he didn't see things like this, you see. But as he grew older into a more mature Christian, he's seen things in a different way. Maybe he's seen how much more uh, love uh, is much so much better than all these other gifts. It said, for now we see through a glass, dark. So I just said when that you could say he's seeing things in a different light, right? When you say he's not seeing things in a different light, that means just like he's saying here, if you're not the lights, so you can't see as good, right? If you dim them down, you can't see as good. But when you turn the lights on, you can see you see in a different light. 
and you can see better than you did before. Things come to you. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. In other words, you don't know everything now. We don't know everything. He said, but then I shall know even as also I am known. There's nobody in, that I know of that got every answer out of the Bible. Knows much about that, much about it. Knows everything about it. He said, I know in part. We know partly part of what the Bible says. But then we're, I think we're going to know it all. We're going to understand better than we do now. You know, that um, in 10 where it says, but when that which is perfect is come, that could be like when you turn, when you are a Christian, when you become a Christian, and then you do away with the unperfect part. Could be. That, that's what, that's how I kind of feel that. That which is perfect is come, then that means like when you accept the Lord as your Savior has come, and then that which is part shall be done away with. Verse you're whole as a Christian and not whole as a sinner. I just want to point this one thing out. Verse 12 is often misquoted. Because the last part of it. Now, I think people are going to know you who you are when you get to heaven. But it doesn't say, I will be known as I am known. A lot of people misquote that to say that. But that's not what it says. It says, I will know even as I am known. See, Christ knows all about us, don't he? In each one of us. We don't we probably don't even know that much about ourselves. <laughs> Do we know how we would act in certain situations? Sometimes not. But we will know more about everything when we get to it. Um, and he goes on to say, And now abide with faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. You know what? If you look, if you didn't read this chapter, and read that verse, and left off the last part, we might think the greatest of these is faith, right? Because we preach faith so much. We're saved by faith. The Bible says we live by faith. So why is charity more important than faith? Anybody got that answer for that? That's love. Do you think you can have faith if you don't have love? Probably not. Anybody else have a thought on that? The love is the foundation of that faith. Right. The Bible has so much to say about um, about love. Like I say, it says 329, eight times, I think, something like that. And uh, I think the first book of John, one of the uh, chapters, maybe the first chapter, the second or third, John mentions love, I think, 17 times, that one chapter. Finally, Jesus says this in John 13, 35. He said, All men know ye are my disciples by what? By because you love one another. You know, this is why it's so important if, if people are able, it's so important to attend to church services. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. I can love one another. How can you love your brother and sister? You don't know who they are. Right. How do you know who to pray for if you're not here to hear their request? How do you know how people pray for you if you're not here to ask them? So church is so important to Christians, I think. I know I couldn't get along without That's all I got to do. We try and go over that mark Mark and I go there and we meet with young couples before they get married. It's sort of very important scriptures. I love what it talks about there about putting away childish things and maybe growing and maturing as a Christian. I remember one of the moderators of the conference I was in many years ago spent a lot of time talking about the 
top of her divorce, and you'd have thought for many, many of the conference meetings that it had been possible for somebody that had been divorced to ever be a Christian. And then one conference, just out of the blue, this is many years later, he came forward and showed how the God had turned his thinking around. And people could be forgiven of that if, if it wasn't scriptural, just like anything else. Now, that took a lot of that took a lot of, uh, of heart to, to share what God had showed him, and that took a lot of uh, wisdom to let God speak to him, to change to change a way of looking at something, the way he looked at it for years. This person, I don't want to tell you their name, but if I told you, most of you would know them. This person was very serious about this. I mean, he spent a lot of conference meeting times talking about this. And to have this change of heart, is that a sign of weakness? Oh, I think that's a sign of maturity. That's a sign of growing in the Lord and allowing God to speak to you and increase your understanding and give you a different way of thinking about things. And so, uh, very good job. Have anyone got something you'd like to add tonight before we dismiss? Thank you for coming. The roads might be a little slick going home. Be careful. We'll be back uh, Wednesday night, uh, Lord willing. Brother John, he had hurt his back somehow this week, so he he's came up to me last Sunday morning and said, Pastor Joe, you need a Wednesday off. How about me coming and speaking soon? I said, how about this Wednesday, John? He went, oh, okay. So, Lord willing, he'll teach something Wednesday. If not, I'll take care of the service. But come if you can. Um, let's continue to pray for our church and pray for the needs of the church. Next, uh, is it, let's see, it's two Saturdays. It's the men's breakfast, right, but on the 5th of February, next Saturday is a funeral for Kelly Dillon at the Crane Funeral Home in um, Romulus. And the visitation and reviewing starts, I believe, I think it's at 11.30. And the service will be there at the funeral home probably about 1. We'll start with that if you can make it. I know this family appreciate it. Anything else you'd like to share tonight, Church? Horn Hole Thursday. Horn Hole Thursday, yes. <laughs> I'll forget that. All right, if nothing else, then let's stand and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Brother Rich, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us such strong people in this church, Father, that can lead us and guide us and teach us, Lord God. It's only through you that we are able to do this, Father. Lord God, let, let us take this lesson on love, Lord, and take it out into the world and show them your Show them that we are child, uh, children of you, Lord, that uh, through the love that we express. Father, keep us safe until our next point in time, Lord. And uh, we just ask this all in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen.